For this section, we consider solving absolute value equalities. First, let's review absolute values. For geometric definition, the absolute value of x, okay, so here x is a real number, we're going to put it between bars, that's just the distance from 0 to x. So if I take the absolute value of 3, okay, we have our number line here, I pin down 0, distance from 0 to 3 is 3. If I want the absolute value of minus 3, distance from 0 to minus 3, that's still going to be 3. And you can see the mechanics for actually calculating absolute value are as follows. If we have 0 or a positive number, we do nothing. Okay, the absolute value of 0 is just 0. Distance from 0 to 0 is 0. If I have a negative number, we just drop the sign. That's pretty much all you need to know for actually computing absolute values. Now, solving absolute value equalities, the most basic type we could give right here. So this would be something like find all x with the absolute value of x equal to 2. If we translate, that's the same as saying find all x with distance 2 from 0. So if I draw the real number line, I pin down zero, I go two in either direction. We note we have two solutions, minus two and two, or we can write that as single item plus minus two. In general, that's gonna give away the whole game. So our main idea is if I wanna solve the absolute value of box, where box is any complicated object, okay, so we have absolute value of box equal to C, then, to take off the bars, I'll have box equal to plus minus c. And note here, c has got to be greater than or equal to zero. We only consider zero or positive distances. So if I have c negative, the answer is immediately no solution. And we'll see that in the examples. For a checklist for solving absolute value equalities, first, we'll start with cleanup. So if we have fractions, we can clear out the denominators because we have an equals. If we have parentheses, we want to distribute to get rid of them, and so on. The goal, we want to isolate the absolute value of box. So if I have absolute value of box equal to C, then what we do to take away the bars, we just switch to box equal to plus minus C. Now we should be able to solve for X, and it's pretty crucial to check your work, okay? With absolute value, there will be cases where you get false solutions. We wanna make sure we catch those. Now, let's consider an example where we're already isolated. So we have absolute value of x minus two equal to four. I take away the bars, we get plus minus four. I add two to both sides. That gives x equal to two plus minus four. That's really two numbers, two minus four and two plus four. So we'll get x equal to minus two and six. I check my work. So for x equal to minus two, we put it back into the original equation. We have minus two minus two, that's a minus four. If I have absolute value of minus four, that's a negative, so we just throw away the sign. And we get the four that we were looking for. For the six, that's a little bit easier. We're taking absolute value of six minus two. That gives us absolute value of four. For a positive number, we just throw the bars away or just leave the four alone to get a four. And again, that checks our work. Next step, here we need to isolate. So this is just gonna be the typical isolation procedure for linear equations. So what do we do? I want to get the absolute value of x minus 1 by itself. I'll add 21 to both sides to move the 21 over. That gives 3 absolute value of x minus 1 equals 21. We divide both sides by 3. We get absolute value of x minus 1 equal to 7. Now, all I have to do is drop the bar. We get plus minus on the other side, so plus minus 7. I move the minus one to the other side by adding plus one to both sides, and we get x equal to one plus minus seven. That's actually two numbers, so we're gonna have a minus six 
and an 8 for our answer. Of course, we check both answers, so we'll check the negative one. I have, okay, we put minus 6 into this expression, so that's a minus 6 minus 1. That's a minus 7. We take the absolute value that goes to 7 by dropping the sign. And then 3 times 7 is a 21, minus 21 is 0. Likewise for the solution of 8. Now, let's change the minus 21 to a plus 21. When we do the isolation, that's going to get us to x minus 1 equal to minus 7. Note, minus 7, we can't have distance minus 7, so I can never make this happen no matter what x you try to put in here. So you can automatically go to no solution, but typically what happens is you forget and you just go ahead and solve, finish out the procedure. Not a problem as long as you check your work. And so were we to just continue with the plus minus, you'll still get the answers of minus six and eight. Let's check the eight. If I put eight into the original here, we have, Okay, it's going to be 3 times 7 is 21, plus 21 gives me a 42, so we don't hit the 0 that we're looking for. So I'd have to throw away the 8. Likewise, if you try the minus 6, you'll need to throw that one away too. So, no problem if you um, don't notice the negative immediately dumps you into no solution. For an example with a little bit of fraction work, let's try 1 fifth, absolute value of the quantity 2x minus 1 over 3, plus 1 equal to 2. First goal is to isolate the absolute value. So we'll move the 1 to the other side. And then what, what's left over, we're going to multiply by a 5 over 1 on both sides to clear out the denominator of 5 out in front of the absolute value. So that's going to leave us with absolute value of 2x minus 1 over 3 equal to 5. If I want to take away the bars, then plus minus on the other side. So we get 2x minus 1 over 3 equal to plus minus 5. My next move, I want to clear out the 3 in the denominator, so I'll multiply both sides by 3 over 1. That'll give me 2x minus 1 equal to plus minus 15. We move the 1 over. And then I'm looking at the two equations, 2x equal to minus 14 and 2x equal to 16, giving for solutions minus 7 and 8. Of course, we want to check those. And so that's a little bit of arithmetic with fractions. So note what will happen when minus 7 goes in. In the numerator, we'll get a minus 14 minus 1 or a minus 15. Minus 15. We throw away the sign, we get a plus 15, and then 15 over 3 is going to cancel with the 1 fifth to give us a 1, plus 1 gives us the 2 that we're looking for. Likewise, when we put in for the solution of 8, and that'll check out also. Now, one special case, and we're not going to focus heavily on it, but it's worth showing. If we've got two isolated, absolute values on either side of an equals, the process is exactly the same. What do we do? If I remove bars, we plus minus. Now, here we've got two bars, so it may seem that you have to plus minus twice for each side, but actually that's covered if you do it only once. And then because we've got expressions, we may want to put those in parentheses so negative signs distribute correctly. For instance, if I have absolute value of x plus 3 equal to absolute value of x plus 1, keep it very basic. To take the bars off, well, I would have had plus minus x plus 3 equal to plus minus x plus 1, but I only need one of those because plus minus will only wash out to two things when we multiply. So I'm looking at x plus 3 equal to plus minus quantity x plus 1. We get two equations. Okay, note for the negative, I'm careful to put parentheses in here to make sure it distributes. So for that one, we'll get x plus 3 equal to minus parentheses x plus 1. We distribute, we get a minus x minus 1. And then when I do the algebra, 
we'll wind up with an x equal to minus 2. If I check, Okay, here we'll put the minus 2 in to both sides at once. I like to put a question mark over my equal sign just to let me know that this is what I'm checking. I don't know that they're equal yet. And then that's going to give me a minus 1 in absolute value, which is a 1. Is that equal to the absolute value of 1, which is also 1? Yes, it is. So our work is checked. For the other equation, the plus, we get x plus 3 equal to x plus 1. I cancel the x's and we get 3 equal to 1. Note the x's have dropped out completely and what's left over is a false statement. So that's not going to produce anything useful. And so we could just stop there.